Hey, welcome back to another video in the ASP.NET web development series. In this video, we're going to put tables on a view. So the tables that we want to create for this view are coming from this list that we defined in the last lesson. So list of user model. So let's scroll down into the area right after the two labels and we'll create a new table. So in HTML, the table command is table. Now for the first row, we're going to put in TR. So what's a TR stand for? Table row. The first items inside a T row should be TH. That stands for table header. So what's in the header? So the three items that are going to put into this uh, header row is the name, email, and phone number of each person. So if we wanted to put in a row, we would put TR, and then each column in the row is the TD tag, which stands for table data. So that should give us one row. Let's, uh, let's copy and paste Roger, and let's give a, a run. So I'm going to put three people in, and I'm going to end up erasing these anyway because they're all just static. But I'm just testing out my skills to see if I can make a table. And the table would look good if it had a border, and so I'll put border equals one. We can see the table better. So you can see that the table is displaying when I run the application. The table headers are listed as name, email, and phone, and then each table definition is looking like this. Now, a common problem that you find in HTML code is somebody puts in something wrong. Let's put in TR, for example, here, and let's see what happens with our messed up table. So you can see if you put in one tag incorrectly, your table looks really strange. We start to see multiple items in one row. Obviously, this isn't what we want, so I'm going to go back and fix the problem. So let's do a control Z to fix the change right there. Now obviously I don't want just standard static text in here. I want to have actual rows with the people that are in my list. So let's delete all of the static parts and we'll keep just the header. So the next razor tag that I'm going to introduce is the for loop. Actually the for each loop. So what I want to do is loop through the model. Remember the model is a list and I'm going to define every counter or every instance in that list as the letter U. So that stands for user. So now I'm going to define a table row and then each column in it as a TD item. So inside of the items, I'm going to define another razor symbol. So at U refers to the variable name. And of course, each of them has a property. So we'll choose name, email address and phone. So these are all supplied to us by type ahead help from Visual Studio. And when I'm done I have a actual table row that's defined. I can see that there is one error that I must have done wrong. Let's see the word name doesn't occur but let's see what does occur. It's probably capitalized so I'm going to retype that and select name from the list. So yes it is a capital name. So we should be able to see a table populated with the things that were defined in our controller. Let's look at the controller just for a second before we click run. So remember in the controller I defined a list called users and then passed that users along to the view. So that's the model and in the view we should see at the top line that this is a list of user model. Let's see how this works. So yes it does look like the data came through correctly. So I had four people in my users list. Each of them has a different email address and name. The phone numbers, however, I didn't change. Now this is a very simple way to display the user name and the user email address. That's not actually the correct way. In the uh, documentation for Microsoft, you will find that they would like you to create uh, an inline statement that is a, is a lambda function. Let me show you what that looks like. So the statement that they would like you to use is called HTML.Display4. So inside of the parentheses, we create a small function, a lambda function. If you don't know what lambda function is, that's another subject. But it returns a value from what's called an anonymous function. 
So the function is going to be called model item. That's the result. And u.name is still the data that we're looking for. So either one of those will actually display the properties correctly. So the question will probably immediately arise is what's the advantage of using display for and not just model? Well, the at model idea is what I showed you first and is much more simple. So as you can see in the question of this user at Stack Overflow, he says, why not just have at model dot partner name? That's really what I would like to choose. So this will give you straight text. It'll give you the properties, which is fine. However, display for and this uh, inline function where we have M and then the arrow is going to provide us with one advantage. Let's go look at the accepted answer here. And it says here, when you display a value using the regular at model, it places plain text into your HTML without any surrounding markup, which seems fine. When you use the display for, you are invoking a display template to render the object. Well, we haven't looked at what display templates are yet. So that's an advantage that we're ignorant of. We don't know what the advantage there is. But it does go on to say, these display templates usually contain markup to make sure that the values are displayed correctly in a certain way. For instance, let's say you have currency or you have a date. Then the display will not just show you a plain old number. It will probably put a dollar sign in it. So let's come back in here to this code. Anytime that you create a new view, and you ask it to generate code for you. It always uses this style right here. So this is the style that Microsoft defaults to and it's probably the one we should use as well. So I'm going to copy and paste the first line twice and then change the properties of the uh, actual item from name to email address and from name to phone number. This should display exactly the same as what we had before. So when I run the application, you can see that the table still looks like it did before. Let's right click and choose inspect and see what kind of code we've generated. So I'm going to select the one item in the table and you can see that we have Jimmy Connors and his other information around him. Let's switch back to the internet and let's go look for some formatting for our table. So I'm at this website called W3Schools and I searched for how to format a table. So I'm just simply going to borrow this style right here. So let's try it ourselves and see what kind of styling they give us. So you can see this looks pretty nice. It's got uh, every other line is gray. So the style section here for tables and the TD and THs are all listed there. So I'm just going to steal this, borrow it, let's say, copy this. I'm switching back into my uh, original code here and inside of the style tag, I'm pasting in table and all of the things that it gave me there. Let's check out some of the items that are here. So the table is going to have a aerial font. It's going to be a 100% width of the screen. And uh, then the table definitions or the table data and the table headers all have a border. They have a bit of padding. And here's the magic that I really didn't remember how to do is the nth child and the even number. So every nth child is going to be shaded this color here. So there we have it. We have a table and it's 100% width. It's all in the Arial font and every other row is striped. Hey, at this point of the class, we have come to a challenge. Uh-oh, challenge alert. So what I'd like you to do is to reproduce what we just did for practice, to cement everything in your mind well. So I'd like you to go into the models area and create a different model. Instead of a user, think of a new product. Okay, so create a movie, a car, or an airline ticket, or any kind of product that might be on a website. And I want you to have more than just string properties. So use string, an integer, and date for your properties. You can have more, but at least those. And then also we want to have a controller and a view based on the examples that we just created in this exercise. So create a list of airline tickets, for example, with their dates and prices, and display them. Come up with a nice CSS formatted table, just like we did here, and um, do some screen captures to show me the results. So there's your challenge at the end of this project.